Rod Buckling. Uh, first of all, we need a dynamometer and fluid level survey. And that gives us a snapshot of what conditions of the well. Are we pounding fluid? Are we, you know, uh, what sort of loading? Do we have downhole friction? We need to know what we have, what we're dealing with, and that can usually come from the dynamometer and fluid level survey. <coughs> then we need to review the surface pumping parameters. We need to know how fast we're, we're turning strokes per minute, stroke length, and I just figure on a polished rod velocity, two times the stroke length, times the strokes per minute. It makes it easy. I have a rule of thumb. Most wells that uh, are at about 1,500 inches per minute or less, I very seldom have problems. Have y'all looked into that any? 1,500 inches per minute or less is usually turning pretty slow, and I don't really have that many problems with those type of wells, although there's always exceptions. But uh, as a rule of thumb, I don't have that much problem with a well going that slow. Yeah, have many? Is that when you multiply the strokes per minute times stroke length? Strokes, strokes, stroke length times two, because it's got to go up and down, oh. times strokes per minute. That gives you inches per minute. It makes it easy. You don't have to convert to feet per minute and, or feet per second. Or, <coughs> oh. Strokes per minute. Mm -hmm. That gives you inches per minute. Okay. We've, said, we've uh, recommended now Lufkin has two. 1,500 is the maximum. That's just <coughs> multiplying the stroke length times strokes per minute. Which would be twice as fast as we're Oh, okay. Okay. So that would be slow. And so that's the maximum you're saying? Right. Okay. It would be 3,000 the way you're bigger. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense because that is moving pretty fast then. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times though, we're not, we don't have the, the uh, privilege of just operating at 1,500 inches per minute. We've got to move a lot of fluid. So we need to look at some other things. Uh, and installing a pump off controller can sure help because then you min minimize the, the number of fluid pound strokes that you do and you can match your pump capacity to the well capacity with a good pump off controller. But don't forget even a pump off controller is going to stroke about twice before it shuts down if you've got it really set fine. So you're still going to do two fluid pound strokes before you get it shut down. So don't forget your pumping parameters because the slower you pound fluid on those two strokes the less damage you do. I like to have a rule of thumb again of about 25% over pump capacity over the well capacity. Or in other words, a PLC ought to be able to run about 75% or greater, somewhere in that area. That way you know you're turning as slow as you can and still producing the well at maximum rate. Then we get to the part that Scott likes. We can install a sinker bar section uh, to take care of this rod buckling. It'll stiffen up the rod buckling area. That's the whole idea. I'll never forget when we, where we were in this failure uh, team when Scott first came on. He said something the first day that I'd never even thought about as far as using sinker bars in the design. He said, we can't do away with negative loading near the pump, but we can stiffen the rod string in that area to reduce the effects of the, of the negative loading. Well, that made sense. So that's kind of started us on what we're doing here. Okay. All right, how, to design the sinker bar section to contain compressive loads, uh, we need to take a few things into consideration. First of all, the sinker bars are going to have a larger cross-sectional area than a rod, so that's going to minimize the, the buckling effects. It's just going to buckle less. If the sinker bar section is not long enough, then we're going to buckle rods above the sinker bar section. And, and Scott's got some data showing this happening when we were on this failure team. But if we got the sinker bar section too long, then we're just adding excessive loading to the equipment. We're actually re probably reducing pump capacity in some cases when we're adding that extra load down there and we're taking extra energy to pump it. So we don't want, too much is not always good. Okay. All right, here's just a, a little diagram showing the rod string without sinker bars. You've got all the buckling going on here and origin of compression right here. Then you add the sinker bars, you still got buckling. There's no way you're gonna take out all the buckling, but you have a lot less uh, effective buckling going on here with a stiffer rod string. And incidentally, your origin of compression actually moves downwards as you add that extra rod load due to sinker bars. So your neutral point origin of compression has moved down here within the sinker bar section length. Okay. Now something we did learn, we, we had some, uh, we were sitting down one day and we'd, we'd started trying to design our sinker bar sections and we had two failure samples of tubing that still showed an imprint of a three-quarter rod box in our sinker bar section. Okay, so now we're trying to figure out how in the world, you know, well, yeah, we still got buckling going on. It's not near as severe, but it's enough to still to remove that corrosive inhibitor film and to cause damage. 
So what we came up with is just run a slim hole, like if you got three quarter uh, pins on your inch and a half sinker bars, run a slim hole coupling. And then you've got a uniform OD, the complete length of your sinker bar section. You have no concentrated area to wear. So you spread the wear pattern out. Okay. Let's see, I think we've got a little ways to go here. <laughs> you getting in a hurry on me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this, this Scott ought to be talking about this because he did.